welcome here tonight. Such a great privilege to speak to you. Beautiful people. Yes, you are beautiful, all of you, even the big ones, the big ones with big biceps. You are beautiful. You are special. God loves you. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. I want to talk about the love of God again, being rooted and grounded in the love of God. Isn't a parent's love amazing? Come here, my big boy. Again, I'll use you because you sit in the big front, in the front row. A parent's love is amazing. Once you become a parent, most of you still do not have children. You're not married. But, you know, when this boy of mine, 22 years old today, was born, the first thing I looked for was, is he a boy? Amen. Well, how do you see that, Pastor? Well, I won't tell you. Okay, I'll t- you can find out one day. Because the first, my first child was a girl. And uh, I thank God for my first child, Angelique, 22 as well. they Irish twins. And uh, the doctors looked at the sonar and told us we're going to have a boy. And two weeks before Angelique was born, I had a dream. And God said to me, this is not a boy, it's a girl. And our bedroom was pink or, or blue. And here came Angelique, a beautiful baby, 2.74 kilograms. I'll never forget the day that she was born, came out of her mother's womb. And there was an instant love relationship between Angelique and, and me. When she saw me, she fell in love with her dad. And still today, she's in love with her dad. How many of your parents know what I'm talking about? Oh, come on. The rest of you are obviously not parents. And then my boy was born 22 years ago. He came out looking like a boxer. His eyes, he was obviously wrestling in the womb. As he still is a big wrestler today. But when he came out, same thing. Love at first sight. Just loved him. Loved him ever since. As often as I can, I put my arm around him. As often as I can, I hug him. Although he's very busy and and some girl is trying to take him away from me. Won't talk about that. I have to fight for my children's attention now. Two of them sitting there in Pretoria, my beautiful girls, blondes. I'm the man in your life. Don't ever forget that. And then my boy. My boy. You are your father's boy. You are your father's girl. When the father saw you at conception, it was love at first sight. Ever since that day, he's loved, loved you. He's never stopped loving you. Because God is love. God is not some religion. God is not some philosophy. God is not the man upstairs that is out to get you. I believed that for years. I saw, thought God was this angry, stern God. A God who kept a black book with many crosses and a few marks. Because most of my life was messed up. All through my school life, my teenage years, I lived a messed up life. I never understood that God loved me. Never understood how much God loved me. Because I was plagued by sin like so many people. At one point in my life, I actually thought God had given up on me. When I was 16 years old, I wanted to commit suicide for whatever reason. I was hopeless, felt hopeless, felt there is nobody in this world who loves me. I was wrong. My parents loved me. My friends loved me. My brother loved me. My sisters loved me. But sometimes people can get to a place of loneliness and feel totally abandoned because of Maybe a girlfriend who left them or a boyfriend who said, I'm going to marry you, who walked out on them. Or a father who walked out of the home when the children were small. Or a father who had to be the gatekeeper of the house, beating up the mother, beating up the children. Or an uncle who came to visit, molesting the three-year-old girl or the seven-year-old boy again and again and again. And somehow that child grew up into adulthood, not understanding that there is something like love. When we talk about love, it's an abstract word, a word that is foreign, a word that we cannot comprehend, let alone talking about the love of God, because every human being we've come into contact with has been a relationship based on performance. If you do this, I will do that. If you treat me like this, I will treat you like that. Maybe your father told you, if you play the first rugby team, I will buy you your first bicycle. If you do that, I will do that. If you do this, I will do that. Many children grew up. Seeing love as something that is rooted in performance. Other children grew up never having a man put his arms around him in a pure way, saying, I love you. Many orphan hearts in our nation today who never heard a parent say, I love you. Many children who never had 
Somebody tell them I love you. Do you know when you talk to plants and you, you speak good things over plants, plants respond and they grow beautiful? People are exactly the same. When you put your hands on your children, when you put your hands on fragile, broken people out there in the world in a pure way, and you speak words of comfort and words of love, it is amazing how people come alive, how human spirits revive when they hear those simple words, I love you. Not the young guy who says it to the girl with no intention to marry her just because he wants something from her. But somebody crossing your path and telling you, I love you just because. I love you in spite of you. I love you because you are you. And this is what I want to talk about tonight. The Father's love. A father that loves you more than I can ever love my son or my two beautiful daughters. A father that loves you more than ever any father could ever love his children. And until you don't come to comprehend and understand that amazing love of God, it will be as if your world is out of orbit. You will look for something. Significance in another accolade. Significance in another relationship. You'll seek your wholeness in doing something for God. Well, tonight my message is very clear. God loves you just because. He loves you. And I know as men, we feel all uncomfortable when another man tells us he loves us. So we have a problem with God our Father, whose first message to us is simply, I love you. I love you so much that I sent my son to die for you. I love this world so much that I sent my son into this world. Knowing that most people will reject my offering and my sacrifice of love. I love you because I cannot deny myself. I am love. I am God. I am what you are looking for. I am the only one who can stabilize your heart and your universe and give you a sense of meaning. How many broken people, how many young girls sitting here tonight across this great nation of ours broken because of some tragedy that happened, some broken relationship, some abuse, some misuse that happened in their lives. And today they are parents themselves and cannot give love. I believe God is calling us as a church across the country into an experience with Him as our Father, into an ocean of God's love. And that is what I want to talk about tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise here tonight. Oh, come on, clap your hands because you love Him. Come on down there in Cape Town, all over this country. So my message tonight, simply being rooted and grounded in the love of God. Ephesians 3, the Bible says in verse 14 to 21, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in the love, in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints, what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above all we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. I want to talk to you about being rooted, being secure in the love that God has for you. We can doubt many things in this world, my dear friend, but we cannot doubt the love that God has for us. Though we may be invisible, His love is more real than anything else you have ever encountered in life. Only Christianity is founded in, li in love. Every other religion is founded in law. If you do this, I will do that. If you do not do this, you will pay the price for that. God says, I love you unconditionally. I love you in spite of you. I love you because of you. I love you because of my son tonight. His love is like an ocean. You can never reach the end of God's love. You can never sink beneath the love of God. There is no place you can run where the love of God will not find you. When you are rooted and grounded in the love of God, the storms and the trials and the tribulations of this life do not unsettle you. You don't allow condemnation and guilt and shame to rob you of your confidence in God. People rooted in the love of God are different. Like a child that grows up in a home where the child knows I'm loved by the father. 
They run onto the rugby field differently. They play netball differently. Yuck skate differently. They go to school differently. Whatever they do, they do differently. Because they know I'm loved. We're on the platform of life. And we have a father cheering us on. He's in the grandstands of the heavens tonight. He's not a father who looks. And when he looks in your direction, you have to duck. Except if you make a duck in cricket. No. He's a father who loves you unconditionally. He's a father who loves you without end. He's a father who will never give up on you. He's a father who calls you into this living, loving relationship. I went to church for years and read my Bible and prayed every night. I never knew the love of God. Never knew Jesus. Went to church. Went to Sunday school. Put on my suit and my tie and my blue shirt, suede shoes. But I never knew God. I never knew the love of God. For me, Christianity was a rule book of do's and don'ts. Going to church was a terrible experience for me because I, all I heard was, thou shalt not and thou shalt not and thou shalt not. Never did I hear about a love, a God who loves me unconditionally, a God who wants to put his arms around me, a God who cares about me. Growing up, living without God for many years, from disco to disco and pub to pub, God became something very abstract to me. It was like God was out there to get me. I was afraid of God. I was afraid of the judgment of God. I was afraid of death because I knew my life was so wrong. Nobody ever told me God loved me. Maybe tonight for the first time, somebody looks you in the eye through that camera tonight and says, hey man, God loves you. What you're looking for is not another girlfriend. It's not another boyfriend. You are looking for God. What your heart is crying out for is to find yourself. And the only place you will find yourself, young girl, he's not in that relationship of that boyfriend that is abusing you and manipulating you. The only place you will find yourself is in the arms of Jesus. It's by giving yourself to God, by coming to Him, though invisible, more real than this man preaching through this microphone, looking at you through that camera. He's more real than any person that you've ever seen. And He loves you with an everlasting love. He loves you like nobody has ever loved you. Child of God, the greatest revelation you can have is an understanding of God's love. The Apostle Paul says, I pray that you be rooted and grounded in the love of God. I pray that you comprehend the love that God has for you. You cannot run away from God's love. There is no place you can go where the love of God will not find you. Every step of the way, He's there. When you're at your lowest, He's there. When you're at your highest, He's there. When you're at your worst, He's there. When you're at your best, He's there. He's a Father who cannot deny Himself. He's a Father who loves you. If you believe it tonight, come on. Give Him a praise offering in the house. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say, thank God for His love. In Romans 8 verse 38, the Apostle Paul says, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, no things to come, no height, no depth, no any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. There is nothing you can do that will make God stop loving you. Don't allow the enemy to question God's love. Don't allow a brother or a sister to come along to move you out of the love of God. Jude one twenty one, the Bible says, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy, not the judgment of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Don't allow anything or anyone to move you out of God's love. Don't allow the enemy to use condemnation and guilt to move you out of the love of God. But allow the Holy Spirit to plant you in the love of God. As a child who knows I am love. You say, this is so simple, so simple, but the greatest revelation, because your faith works by love. Everything comes out of that relationship of love, understanding how much God loves you. When the storms come, when a crisis comes, when things go bad, when you don't make the team, when you don't get the job, that's not the time to doubt God's intention towards you. That's the time to stay rooted and grounded in the love that God has for you. He loves you with a perfect love. 
He loves you with a never-ending love. He loves you with an unconditional love. But sadly, we are so used to a performance-based love that when we hear about a loving God who loves us just because, in spite of us, no matter who we are, no matter what we have done, we struggle. Because we are so used to the fact that we are accepted based on what we do. And yeah, God comes and He says, you're accepted based on what I did. You're accepted in the beloved. I'll never stop loving you. I will love you into submission. I will love you back into my home. I will love you back into your wholeness. I will love you until you are never the same. It is my goodness that will lead you to repentance. Come on, somebody give Him praise for His goodness tonight. Hallelujah. He loves you because He is God. He loves you because He is God. People may write you off. He doesn't. People may frown on you. He doesn't. People may give up on you. He never will. No matter what you do. And I'm not saying go do stupid things. I'm saying when you do stupid things, God still loves you. The only place you will find yourself is in that ocean of God's love. Where your heart comes to ease, where your heart comes to rest, where you no longer doubt God loves me. I've said it and I'll say it again. When people go through difficult times in their lives, the first thing they question is the will of God. Is this God? I'm going through this financial crisis. I've been diagnosed with a sickness. Is God trying to teach me? Maybe God is punishing me. Speak to people who talk about other people who go through difficult times. And you see the revelation, the lack of understanding people have regarding the love of God. That sometimes people think God is causing those things to happen. God is folding His arms and He's just allowing sickness and disease. He's the cause of evil. My brother and my sister, the Bible says every good and every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights with whom there's no variableness or shadow of turning. The Bible says God is good. The Bible says if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give good things to those who ask Him? So you may be a bad boy tonight. God loves you anyhow. God loves you in spite of you. Come on, you have to hear this. This has to sink into your heart tonight. You may be somebody running away from God. You are going to bump into the love of God because He's chasing after you. Because you are special. You in the corner over there. You in the balcony up there. You sitting in the back of Pretoria. You sitting there in Stellenbosch. You are special, young girl. I know you may not feel special tonight, but you need to hear it. You are special. You are beautiful in the eyes of God. When God sees you, He doesn't see your flaws. He doesn't see your failures. He doesn't see your blemishes. He doesn't look at you the way you look at yourself. Oh, if I looked like this one, if I looked like that one, I'd be happy. God says, be happy. I created you fearfully and wonderfully. Come on, marvelous are thy works and that my soul knows very well. He made you exactly how he wanted you to be. Oh, come on, give him a praise in the house. Hallelujah. When we're not secure in ourselves, we always find problems with ourselves. When we're not secure in the love of God, we live with a slave mentality. This is a love story greatest love story ever told God so loved that he gave himself he gave everything that's how important you are it's not just the world that has to hear that it's you Paul says that the church may comprehend understand what is the width the length the breadth the depth the height of the love of God. Understanding that love gives you a security, a confidence, a boldness when you get up in the morning. Oh, my boyfriend can drop me. God's got somebody better for me and this may not be the time. Come on. Come on. Somebody may walk out on me. But God will never walk out on me. That's what David said. When my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Come on, somebody say amen in the house tonight in Jesus' name. But when we are not secure in the love of God, we can be exploited by people. I don't want to lose my job. I need the sugar daddy to go through university. 
I need this girl. She makes me feel good. And in the process, you lose yourself. I'm talking to a young girl here tonight. God will gather 5,000 people like Gary Blumfontein to talk to one young girl. To say to her, no more. Enough. 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 You are beautiful. You are special. Let me put my arms around you. Let me love you. Let me love you. Let me love you. Let me love you. Don't allow that man with the wrong intentions any longer to have his way and to manipulate you and to take you away from me. Come to me. And I will give you rest. 1 John chapter 4 verse 7. The Bible says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God. For God is love. Have you seen that religious people out there in the world don't really care about other people? When the love of God touches you, you care about people. You want to help people. Like Jesus came to help people. The Bible says in this, the love of God was manifested towards us that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. People come and they say, Pastor, I found God. Hey, God wasn't lost. You were lost. God came to you. God came knocking at your heart and you responded to love to grace, to mercy. You gave your life to Jesus because He touched you. And there are people in this place tonight, you can experience the love of God for the first time because God is out to get you, not with judgment, but with mercy. God is not mad with you. Come on. God is madly in love with you tonight. He wants to put His arms around you in Jesus' name and lift you up to a better place than you've ever been. He says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Tell the person next to you, I love you. No, not somebody else's wife. Tell the person. <laughs> Come on, sister, sister, brother, brother, in the right way. Amen. Come on, tell them. Why are we so standoffish with people when, 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 when what we have is to love people? Why are we so, so, so reserved when it comes to loving people? I'm asking a question here tonight. Why do we think about people and we don't think about loving people? If what we have is love, you may not have money, but you have love. Love is the most tangible force in the universe because God is love. You have love on the inside. The love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. What this world needs is not another preacher to judge them. It's not another voice to tell them how bad they are. Not another person to remind them of their sins. But they need somebody to tell them, hey, God loves you, Francois. Hey, God loves you, Tabu. Hey, God loves you, Johan. Hey, God loves you. And Tabi saying, hey, God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. They need somebody to tell them and to remind them of the love that God has for them. Come on, Mpo, gift of God. He loves you. He loves you. Tell that person again next to you. Come on, good news preacher. Tell that person God loves you. Come on, tell them. God loves you. Let that force of love come through you tonight. Tell them they're in Pretoria. God loves you. God loves you. And so do I. God loves you and so do I. It's okay, man. We're competing for the same place. But hey, man. You're not my enemy. Power of God's love, greatest force in the universe. Just looking people in the eye and telling them, hey man, God loves you. Because people that sin out, they feel so bad in any case. They know they've messed up. People in the church who messed up, they know they've messed up. They need a way. His name is Jesus. They need to be reminded of the love that the Father has for them. They need to be pushed back into the ocean of God's love and lose themselves in the love of God. And when they lose themselves in the love of God, the hold of sin will be broken over their lives. This is God's answer for the world. Jesus, who is love. God so loved that He sent His Son to be a propitiation, the mediator, the stand between for our sin. He paid the price that you and I should have paid. He paid the price for all your sin. 
once and for all. People who still talk about the judgment of God have no understanding of what Jesus came and did 2,000 years ago. Judgment was passed 2,000 years ago. We're living in a time in a dispensation of grace today. There is no judgment today. There is mercy today. There is grace today. There is forgiveness today. There is hope today. There is love today because of Jesus Christ. Come on. If you understand that you will love Jesus so much more. Hallelujah. Bible says no one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us and His life has been perfected in us. If we love one another, you cannot love God and be mean with people. You cannot be loved by God and be mean with people. When you were touched by God, you touch people. You know, standing well, I know what he did. I, you know, she's not a spiritual. I saw her in the club. And, and by the way, what were you doing in the club? You know, and I, you know, look how she dressed. Look, look, look at him. He's a hypocrite. Look at, look at, look at him. He doesn't pay his taxes. He, 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 she's messing around. She's got a reputation in the university. And you, what's that pointing people's sins out? When we are touched by the love of God, we show the love of God to our world. We cover people's nakedness. We remove people's shame. We become the hands of Jesus to people out there in the world. We pick those up that have fallen. Come on. We encourage those that have lost hope. We become the voice of God in our world. That's what love does. It transforms us into being God's ambassadors. Our message is one of love, not judgment, mercy, grace. Come to Jesus. As a pastor, I gave my life to Jesus 20 years ago. Hey, you need to come to Jesus every day. You need Jesus every single day of your life. If you don't come to Jesus every day, you'll become one of those hard and legalistic Christians. All you care about is your Bible. So big you can choke a donkey. All you care about is another uh, uh, teaching, another doctrine, another philosophy. And you lose and miss what this is all about. It's about being loved by God and then going and loving your world. As a... Musician there in Pretoria, professional musician, going back into that world among all the artists. Being a top rugby player, as many of you are doing. Going back, man. And we're not talking about this sloppy or guppy. It's not what I'm talking about. We're talking about a love that is real. A love that encourages. A love that stands. A love that believes. A love that covers. A love that picks people up when they are down. That's what we're talking about. Not, I love you with the love of the Lord and tomorrow I stab you with a dagger, with my words in my mouth. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a love that is real as He is real. A love that is filled with truth as He is truth. A love that never quits on people. By this we know that we abide in Him and He in us because He has given us His Spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent His Son as Savior in the world. Verse 15, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in Him and He in God. And we have known and believed. Everybody say known and believed. The love that God has for us, we have to know, rhema, understand, revelation, the love that God has for us. And we have to believe in the love of God. When condemnation comes, when guilt comes, when the enemy tries to take you away from God, we have to believe in the love of God. We have to remind ourselves that God loves me. I don't care how I feel, the Father loves me. I keep myself rooted and grounded in the love of God. Verse 17 says, love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness. Everybody say boldness. In the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this world. How is Jesus today? Beautiful, perfect, righteous. His love has made us righteous. When you understand that you are righteous in Christ, you don't love fearing the judgment of God. I have people sometimes send SMSs to me or tell me, Pastor, you can't just talk about the goodness of God and the love of God. You also have to preach the fear of the Lord. How many of you have heard that? None of you, because we don't do that in CRC. You are saved here and you're hearing a gospel. 
Ah, you have to tell people about the fear of God. The fears from the Hallelujah. Din God met fears in beer. bang, Ja, dat is wat Godsdienst doen. Vul jou hart met vrees. Bible says here that fears has not been perfected in love. Obviously we reverence our Father. We respect our Father. We honor our Father. We love our Father. We obey our Father. But we do not fear our Father. We don't grovel before the throne of grace. We don't crawl before the throne of grace. Oh, oh God, please, if you have a few pennies to spare, give me some, please. I'm hungry. I haven't had food. Uh, I'm just a poor little old sinner. Jesus, please, have, uh, 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 I don't want to bother you today, God. You know, look on me, Lord. I, I'm unworthy. Yes, you were unworthy, but you are now worthy because of Jesus Christ. He never accepted you because of you. In any case, he accepted you because of Jesus Christ. He is not a klein nitte gau sondarkie, waaraf voor die troon kom kruip nie. You're a child. <laughs> Family. I've never had David come into my office and he starts crawling in the passage from there. And he says, Dad, I, you know, Dad, I don't want to bother you. No. I mean, they don't care what you do. Two o'clock in the morning, one o'clock in the morning, they'll just bash the door. Dush, 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 dush. And he more than anybody else, they smash the door down. They don't care. Nothing. I'm a son. What you doing, Dad? Amen. It's a son. Doesn't sit in his room, afraid of his father. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to eat today. I, I, I don't know, am I going to get to school today? I, I, I don't sit like that. He's a son. He understands. He has experienced. He believes in the love of his father. Now the Bible says, and I'm going to close here. It says, there is no fear. Well, let me read it again. Love has been perfected or matured among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love, who is Jesus Christ, casts out all fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Hallelujah. I'm a son, not because of my good works, but because of what Jesus did for me 2,000 years ago. So when you tell me I need to preach the fear of the Lord, you're telling me I need to preach bondage. Get people back into bondage. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We are now sons and daughters of God. We struggle to understand this because of our earthly parents. But he's not like a human being. He is God. He is love. He is perfect and He loves you with a perfect love. No matter how imperfect you may live, He loves you with a perfect love because you're His son, you're His daughter. Many people that go down the wrong path don't want to come close to God because they think that God's going to judge them. He won't. He's going to love you. Listen, He's going to love you and I know what I'm talking about because the Holy Spirit showed me many of you, many of you beautiful people, you're struggling, you're going through issues in your life. The only cure for that is you have to come closer to the Father's bosom. God will love you out of your brokenness. God will love you out of your rejection. God will love you out of your pain. Come on, God will love you out of your yesterday. When God gets a hold of you, God will love you and God's love will make you whole. God's love will give you, will give you purpose in your life, will fill you with boldness and confidence. Even if no human being ever told you, I love you. You will feel the love that the Father has for you. The Apostle John says, we have known and we believe faith and experience. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. We will come and make our abode with you, our dwelling place. We will make ourselves visible to you. When he talks about the Holy Spirit. If you come to him, child of God, the Holy Spirit will love you. 
And you will feel so pure and so whole and so complete. But that sin will just fall away. You won't go back. When that SMS comes, you're not going to respond. When that young boy tries to manipulate you with anger, you're not going to respond. Because you'll be free like a beautiful flower responding to the sunlight. You'll be free and you'll be fresh again. You'll blossom again. Everything that you lost will come back again. You'll find yourself again. And God will make you beautiful. So that one day you can marry. Even if you lost your virginity, you can marry as a virgin one day. You can be precious. You can be pure. But the journey starts tonight for many of you that have messed up. And some of you that are still messing up. God's not mad with you. But how long do you want to stay there? How long do you want to be controlled by that which will destroy your soul? Why don't you come tonight and allow Jesus to put his arms around you as he did that prodigal son? Why don't you come tonight? Young girl, maybe you've grown up in this church. I don't know. But you've lost yourself because you're looking. The greatest need in any human being is love and acceptance. So when we don't get it in our Christianity, we look for it in another relationship. Or we look for it in significance. We look for it in performance. We look for it in in, in what this world has to offer. The success, money, gold, glamour. And all those things are good. God wants you to be successful. God wants you to take you to the mountaintop. We know all those things. But all those things will never stabilize you. Only the love of God can. Let Him love you tonight. There is no fear in love. Let the Father love you. Because your whole Christian journey comes out of the understanding of the love that God has for you as a human being. Because going through the journey of life, you'll meet people that write you off. You'll meet people that are mean, people that criticize you, people that ridicule you. When you go through the storms of life and your questions are not being answered, as unfortunately sometimes things happen, a brilliant young rugby player that has an injury and that seems to be the end of his career. Why, God, why? Are you punishing me? Are you judging me? Have I brought this upon myself, people? that cry out for answers to a God that they don't know. A God who they don't understand because they're not rooted in the love of God. You can doubt many things as I started tonight. But you can never doubt the love that God has for you. God is love. And He loves you.